chocolate and marshmallow melted on crisp cinnamon and honey-flavored crackers. Cream-filled pie or fruit tart on a coarse pie crust. What do these tasty treats have in common? The graham cracker. But graham crackers today are very different from what they used to be. How have graham crackers changed? And what do they have to do with a Presbyterian minister? Food bans, protests, and masturbation? Don't go anywhere, as we find out some more. I love these puns. The graham crackers of today are a far cry from the graham crackers of old. Their inventor was an American Presbyterian minister named Sylvester Graham. In the 1830s, Graham and his followers, known as Grahamites, believed that indulgences like some foods, sex, and alcohol were sinful or decadent and should be controlled or banned from their lifestyle. He created a diet regimen that encouraged people to maintain bland diets with no meat or sugar. In many ways, he was the first proponent of vegetarianism. Need a little of the quinoa salad, please. He also believed that young men could prevent forbidden thoughts by avoiding undue excitement of the brain and stomach and intestines. Graham taught abstinence from alcohol, tobacco, and all drinks with caffeine. He also believed people should not eat butter, refined flour, and seasonings. To Graham, even milk was too exciting and oppressive. He did allow his followers to eat coarsely ground wheat or rye. He believed this would help them curb vices such as smoking, drinking, and masturbation. He lectured against the mass-produced and overly processed foods that had recently appeared during the Industrial Revolution. And Graham was passionately against commercially made white flour, which he considered separated from its nutrients. So he created a bread by using his coarse and unfiltered Graham flour with no sugar or additives and the Graham Cracker was born. Although Graham's diet gained popularity through the 1830s, many people protested against his views. Bakers and butchers attacked him physically and verbally for his extreme views. One religious college in Ohio fed its students a diet based on Graham's philosophy. Many of the students protested, saying the diet was so oppressive they felt they were being forced to join a cult. That diet did not last long. Although Graham's views on sex and food were repressive, some of his views on health reform were progressive. He encouraged people to bathe regularly and drink clean water. He also believed that daily exercise was important. Graham died in 1851 at the age of 55. So, not a longevity diet. But his crackers made a resurgence in 1880 when the National Biscuit Company began selling them. But Nabisco's graham crackers had a very distinct difference from Sylvester Graham's. They were tasty. Nabisco made the crackers with refined flour, sugar, cinnamon, and honey. Everything Sylvester Graham would hate. And they soon became a popular ingredient in many delicious desserts and snacks. But Sylvester Graham's legacy doesn't end with his crackers. He inspired another famous advocate of bland food, Harvey Kellogg, creator of cornflakes. Kellogg also created granola, inspired by the Grahamite diet and the creamy goodness of peanut butter, which we'll explore on another episode of Origins of Food.